Property Effector for Adobe After Effects enables a more procedural approach to animation. If you are familiar with the MoGraph module of Cinema 4D, then you'll be right at home with Property Effector. I'm going to cover three examples in this video. The first two will get you familiar with what Property Effector is and how it works. And the third is something a little more practical. We're going to create a custom video distortion glitch effect. Let's start with a really simple example. I have a composition here with two layers, an A comp and a B comp. And I just want to animate it so when the A goes up, the B goes down. When the B goes up, the A goes down. Now I could keyframe this, you know, and set some keyframes, you know, do the whole thing. But then, you know, it can be difficult to update those down the line. Like if you want to adjust the speed and you want to repeat it or you want to randomize the animation. Yeah, yeah. We all know what keyframes are. That's totally great. Let's create this animation using a more procedural approach. After installation, Property Effector will appear in the window menu of After Effects. And here is the interface. It's nice and compact. If you roll your mouse over the buttons, it'll give you a little tip here explaining what each of these icons does. So let's just start out by docking the panel over here. I'm just going to select the position property for each of these layers and press Add Effector. There you go. There's a new layer here called Property Effector Controls. And the first control on this layer is the Property Effector Driver. The Property Effector Driver is the main control for the entire setup. In general, this is the only value that you will need to animate. Each property has its own percentage control to set how much of the driver signal is mixed back in with the original value. By default, all of the percentage values are set to 100, meaning that 100% of the driver's value is being mixed back in with the original property. By setting the percentages to different values, you can begin to sculpt your animation in a more procedural way. For Comp A, I'm going to zero out the X, keep the Y at 100, zero out the Z. For the B, zero the X, make the Y negative 100, set the Z to zero. So now, when I adjust the driver, they move in opposite directions, but the same amount relative to the driver. So that's pretty handy. Also, you are free to move these layers around. So like if you want to reposition them after you add the property effector, you can do that and see they'll still, they'll just react and it's all relative to whatever position you put the layers to. So it's very flexible that way. You can, you can do all sorts of cool stuff. So I'm just going to undo that, put them back where they were. So let's take it a step further. Maybe we want to add some rotation. So we could do that a few ways. One way we could Maybe just parent both of these to the control effector since it's right in the center there. And then maybe I'll grab the rotation of this and actually add the rotation property of the control layer to the effector. See? So now when I affect the driver, it's actually spinning the whole thing. So that's kind of cool. Maybe it's spinning too much, so we'll turn this down. But to put the rotation on 10, it's a little bit of a gentler effect. So, all right, that's fun. But not quite what I'm going for. So I will just select the rotation again and hit remove effector. Look at that, it just got rid of it. I can undo and it's back. I can also select the control here. Remove effector that way. Great. Maybe I want to make them rotate independently. So I can just select the rotation on each of these, add effector. Now they will spin. Maybe they're spinning too much. So I'll put one on 30 and I'll put this one on negative 30 and now they're gonna spin in opposite directions. It's gonna behave more like gears or something. All right, that's fun. Um, let's add some effects. So maybe I want the A to get all blurry as it spins around. So I'll go to Blur Sharpen, Fast Blur. Go down here, Effects, Fast Blur, get the blurriness. Add that to the effector. Now, it's going to get blurry. You may notice that no blur is applied when the driver is set to a negative value. This is because the blur looks for a range of 0 to 100%. If you would like negative values to also apply blur, you can go to the settings and set the driver to positive only because we only want positive values going here. So now we do that, reselect the blurriness, add effector, and now, oh, it's gonna be relative to the current value. So actually, we wanna set that to zero so that when the driver's at zero, the blur is also at zero. Because it works with an offset, if I set the blur to something like 177, the default value, when the driver's at zero, the blur's still gonna be at 100. So I'm gonna zero out the blur. So driver at zero, blur's at zero. Driver goes up to 100, it gets blurry. Driver goes to a negative number, it also gets blurry. And then what you probably wanna do is set the driver back to direct, because most of the time, you're gonna wanna keep this on direct. It makes the most sense, and it's the most useful in most situations.
All right, so let's add something to the B. Maybe I want to add, I don't know, a distort. We can add a twirl. Why not? All right, that looks awesome. So we'll just go to effect, twirl. We have the angle, and boom, we can add the angle to the property effector. And now, look at that, we have the angle twisting up as it spins. That's kind of fun. Maybe I want this to be more of a transition. So what I can do, grab the opacity. And in this case, let's see here. Let's grab the opacity and let's add that. Let's see what happens. Set this back to zero. We go from zero to 100, they blur. As we go to negative, they fade out. But like, maybe I want it to fade out either direction because it's a transition. So in that case, we can go back to the settings, set it to negative only, which is basically gonna do the absolute value and that's gonna invert it. So now, no matter what happens, if I reselect these, reapply that with this new setting, negative only, now, whichever way I go, it's gonna be turning down the opacity. So I can put this on 10%, 10%, so now they will gently fade out, maybe a little more, I'll put on like 25, 25, there we go. There you go, they twist in position, they, they settle, they twist out of position, they fade out and twirl. A slightly more interesting example, I have a bunch of colored solids here, kind of making up a little rainbow, and each one is parented to the one below it. So you got this guy linked here and here and here and here. So they create like a little chain. Anyway, what I'm going to do is, because they're all linked together like this, I can select the position, add property effector. You'll see, like as I adjust the driver, you get this nice staggered offset, and that's because they're all parented to each other. Even though they have the same amount being applied, it's also being offset by its neighbor. So you kind of get this cool offsetting. So what I'll do is keep the X at 100. I'm just gonna select all of them at once. Keep the X at 100, set the Y to zero, Z to zero. Now when I affect the driver, they all kind of slide out. So that's kind of neat. Now that I see it moving, I actually want the red square to stay put and have everything move around it. So I'm just gonna set the red's position to zero. So now when I adjust it, it all kind of shoots out from center, fixed around the red square. So that's cool. Now, here's something interesting. If you rename your layer to something like property effector position, because property effector looks for the, a layer named property effector controls, if you rename it to property effector position, if you select another property, like say the rotation, and hit add effector, it will make a new property effector control layer and link those up. So now what I actually have is a separate control layer that will rotate the layers and then I have my position down here where I can adjust their position. So that's kind of handy. It's a nice way if you want two separate drivers, you can have two separate drivers. You just need to rename it and it'll just create a new layer called property effector controls. Now if I only want that to adjust the rotation, I can say property effector rotation. Now I can select a different property like scale hit add effector and it will add another control layer for the scale. That's pretty cool. Now I just have three separate areas where I adjust, I adjust my properties. That's kind of neat. You can create some really cool animations very quickly by sort of stacking these together in very simple, intuitive ways. So, so that's nice. All right, let's do something more interesting. I have some stock footage that I've imported into my project here. Some like random clips I grabbed online this is all public domain stuff, so you can probably find it just by doing a quick Google search, or I'll post a link up with the um, video description. So we have this stock footage, and let's say we want to tie it all together using a cool video distortion effect to kind of give it this glitchy sort of sci-fi look. Um, Property Effector is great for doing that sort of stuff. I'm just going to grab one of these clips, drag it down to the new composition icon, and that will create a new composition with the clip using its settings. You can hit Command K to open up your comp settings, and I'm going to just rename this to Footage Precomp. Because I want to use this to actually swap out the footage, and then I can even like create a little edit in here if I wanted to, using a few different clips. And then I'm going to grab that Footage Precomp and drag it down to the new composition icon again, now I'm going to rename this comp to glitch effects. So what I want to do to create my glitch effect is I want to split this composition into its red, green, and blue channels. So I can do that by duplicating it twice. I'm going to rename the top layer to red, 
the second layer to let's do green. What you can do is go to my effects, go down to channel, set channels. And what this will do, I'll sew this layer so we can see what it's doing, is it'll just let you pick what you want to use for your red, green, and blue channel on that layer. So the red, I'm just going to turn off the green and blue channels. Now I'm only seeing the red. Now I can copy this, go to my green layer, paste it, turn the red off, and then turn the green back to green. There we go. Go down to my blue. Same thing, I can just paste it, turn off the red, and then set the blue to blue. So now I have three layers with the three colors, and when I mix them together using the screen blending mode, it looks exactly like my original image. This is a good initial setup. We have the basics of our video glitchy distortion effect. As you can see, as we start kind of moving these layers around, you get all sorts of cool color offsets. So you could animate these using keyframes, but a slightly more fun and flexible way to do it is to use property effector. So I can select the position property of the red, green, and blue layers go over here and hit add effector. Now I can use the driver to adjust the offset. So by default, they're all set to, you know, 100 on their strength effector. So I will just set the red to 10, 0, 0. So it only moves along the X by 10. I will just zero out the green for now and then set the blue to negative 10 and then zero out the Y and Z. And now when I adjust the driver, I get a cool, almost um, anaglyph 3D looking offset of my red and blue colors, which kind of creates a nice, nice effect. We can also add the scale. So bring up the scale, add a factor, go back to the control layer. And now, Let's set these all on zero by default. So now when I turn up my driver, you can see the blue, it still is at 100. It'll actually stretch out. So now like the color separation is much more pronounced at the edges and towards the center, it kind of holds together still. So maybe I'll set these all on like a low value, like five, set the green. Maybe the green is gonna get taller. Set the, the blue on negative. Now when we tweak the driver, we get an even more dramatic sort of distortion color separation effect. You also may notice the footage kind of cuts off around the edges. That's just because it's really old stock footage and it's just kind of baked in like that. So what we can do is just kind of grab these and just scale them up. And then in this footage pre-comp, we can sort of position each clip the way we like it, kind of set our cropping, framing. And then we can bounce back up to our glitch effects. Great, this is starting to look cool, but we can definitely take it a few steps further using property factor. I'm gonna select the red channel, go to my effects, go down to stylize, and add the mosaic effect. What's cool about the mosaic effect is that it essentially lets you control the horizontal and vertical resolution of your image independently. It matches with what we're going for with a glitchy sort of sci-fi look. What I can do is kind of dial in an initial value that I like, you know, pretty close to the original image, but just a little bit blocky. Cool. I can open that up down here in the timeline, select the, let's see, let's have it affect the horizontal. See, that looks kind of cool. So we sort of want to like animate that as the driver moves. So maybe starting initial value, right around 166, maybe we'll just crank it up to 180. Now, come over here, add effector. Great, and now, as the property effector goes, hmm, actually, that's going the wrong way. We want it, as the effector goes up, we actually want the horizontal blocks to go down. So what we can do is just make this a negative value. As the one goes up, the other goes down. And I can just kind of Nudge these around until I get a nice relationship that I like. So a good way to work is I'll set the driver on 100, and then I'll sort of dial in all of these until I get them looking the way I like. And then I know when this animates from 0 to 100, it's going to look cool. And I'm going to have my initial pose, and then my second distorted pose. And it's a nice way to work, you know? Instead of wrangling a ton of keyframes, you can just quickly dial in these relationships between layers and effects. 
Great, so there you go. As we animate the driver, you can see the red channel kind of breaks up along the horizontal there. And why not go ahead and do the same thing to maybe the green channel? We've sort of left the green channel mostly alone for now. So I'll go ahead and add the same effect. Go in here, maybe I'll solo it for a second. Kind of dial in some values that I like. And let's say, you know, we want the green to go the opposite. We want the green to go vertical like this, as opposed to the red. So kind of get an initial value we like, something like that. Select vertical, add a vector. And now, turn these other layers back on. Now the same thing. We want the green to also operate negative because we want it to get blockier as the driver goes up. So there we go. Layers separate, they kind of break apart, but they break apart in different directions. This is starting to be pretty cool. This is a nice custom dynamic effect we've made here. Maybe it's a little too pixelated as initial pose, but that's fine because we can always just grab the values down here at the effect and just turn them up. Because it's all about relative values, relationships. Everything is flexible. Very cool. You know, it's probably scaling a little too much along the, the Y there for the green channel. So again, I can just kind of turn up the driver, get it right around 100, and then just sort of tweak this value until it starts feeling a little bit better. So we got the green scale. Just kind of tweak that and turn that back down. There we go. And I also don't necessarily like these yellow bands that I'm getting, and that's because the blue scale is at a negative value. If I put that back to zero, you can see that disappears, or I can maybe turn it up. So instead of scaling in, it scales out, and that kind of keeps our edges a little bit cleaner. There we go. All right, so that's starting to look cool. What else can we do? Well, why not add a new layer? You can just black solid, and I'll just call this lines. Go to my effects, down here at transitions, the old Venetian blinds effect. Put the transition on 50. Cool, now I have these vertical lines. Put the direction on 90. There we go. Can turn this down a bit to maybe 12. Turn down the opacity, and now we have these nice horizontal lines, which kind of reinforces that old TV kind of low-res look that we're going for. And by adjusting the transition completion, I can tweak how fat those lines are. I can adjust the width to sort of adjust how many there are on screen and, you know, kind of dial in a nice, nice effect that looks good here. So, cool. So now what we can do is select the opacity on this layer, also add that to the property effector. And now, the driver's on zero. Put the initial opacity to zero. There are no lines. And as the driver comes up, the lines appear along with the rest of the glitch effect. So that's sort of cool too. You can be turning layers on and off. You can be adding glitches. And we can even do the same thing to duplicates of our footage. So if we wanted to have like an extra green channel, we could duplicate that, maybe change to blending mode. Maybe we don't want it to have a mosaic at all. We could do that. We could put an entirely different effect. So maybe we want a duplicate of the green channel and it's going to blur. So I had a fast blur. It's like the blurriness. And now we have this sort of semi, I don't know, it's almost like a glow effect now. So we can set that to add maybe. <laughs> All right, that's a bit much. Turn down the opacity. There we go. Just a little extra something. Kind of blow out the greens, make it blurry, make it messy. Fun. Here's some other footage. Let's see how it looks with the creepy kids. Cool. Tweak the driver. Boom, super distorted. Not distorted, super distorted, clean. And it's nice being able to have this, this much control in one place so quickly. We can just keep adding effects and stacking it. We can really create some cool stuff pretty quickly. And change the blending mode of this to overlay. See, that looks a lot better. And again, you can always go back to the footage pre-comp and drag in some new footage. That does it for this video. I encourage you to head over to AE Scripts and download the trial of Property Effector. I really think you'll enjoy playing around with it and creating some really cool effects. Thank you for watching.